Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How To. I'm Brandon Lee, and today I'm excited to share with you a crazy experiment that I've recently conducted. Imagine running almost 2,000 LXE containers on a single mini PC. Sounds impossible, sounds crazy. On the heels of my 250 VMs on a mini PC video, I had comments about how many LXE containers can it run? Well, I gave it a shot and I ran into some very interesting challenges that I want to share with you guys. So let's dive into the details. Well, just day-to-day -day operations in IT can feel like a crazy experiment, especially keeping up with your infrastructure. To help with that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. When you have tons of infrastructure, whether it's on-premises or in the cloud, you know that having visibility and a map of your devices, services, and application dependencies is extremely important. This is where Fathom comes into play, and it makes this typical nightmare a breeze for system administrators. In fact, when you install Fathom, it goes out, it maps out your infrastructure, including networks, application dependencies, and even subnet dependencies. It can do this in around one hour of installing it in most environments. It goes out and it maps out all of the services and infrastructure and it groups these into logical business applications all without the need for agents. You can automatically map and monitor application dependencies and that is extremely tedious work to do manually and it helps you to make sure you understand the critical connections between your applications and your infrastructure and you can identify bottlenecks, problems, and streamline your IT operations. It's one of the easiest monitoring and discovery applications I have in install in my environments. All I had to do was point Fathom at my VMware vSphere environment with distributed switches and it literally went out and did all of the rest. I really like that Fathom provides continuous automatic documentation. It can also do things like change management, impact analysis, cloud migration, data center migration, cybersecurity, and you can start out monitoring 100 servers for 10K a year, which is extremely reasonable compared to other solutions. You can also stand this up in a 14-day trial, which I recommend everyone does in their home lab environment, kick the tires on the solution and see just how well it does what we've talked about. I'll have the official link to the solution in the description for the video. I've got a mini PC powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 processor with 16 threads and 96 gigs of memory. Now these little mini PCs are incredibly powerful and I wanted to push the limits by running as many LXC containers as possible. Previously I managed to run 250 virtual machines on this same hardware and I had comments on the last video as mentioned asking about LXC containers so I thought why not. LXC containers are great because they are like a middle ground between a full VM on one side and then a Docker container on the other. They give you that almost VM-like experience with a much lighter footprint. And in Proxmox, you can easily create and customize LXC containers to deploy containers quickly as this is a native function of Proxmox. I started with 100 containers and as expected the mini PC had no problems with 100 LXC containers. To scale up I used Terraform for automation. I initially added 400 more containers bringing the total to 500 LXC containers. The mini PC still had plenty of headroom so I kept pushing the limits. With 1000 containers the RAM usage spiked to about 50 gigs of memory but things were still running smoothly. Then I hit an interesting roadblock. So I want to show you guys something that has happened that is interesting to me. Um, I seem to have hit some type of limit and I'm not exactly sure what that limit is. However, as you notice, I've cloned up to 1000 LXC containers. What's interesting is just slightly above that, a few more containers that may show that we're up to possibly 1024, kind of thinking that is suspicious of the number that we're seeing here. But it does seem that I've hit a limit of some sort inside of Proxmox. I can show you guys what the message is if I go and I say start this container if I look at the logs if I expand this back up you can see the start command is issued successfully however if I double click into it here's what we see fail to connect to monitor socket connection refuse task okay and the same goes if I connect to the console 
I'll show you what I see here. So you can actually see the start now button, but if we hit the button, it says it started successfully, but then immediately says connection failed, code 1006, container is not running, it does not start. I think this is some type of limit. I'm going to investigate and come back and see what may be the cause or culprit of this potential limit in spinning up LXC containers. But as you guys can see, I mean, I've definitely hit 1000, 1024, and I'm only at 55% memory usage. So this is a bit disappointing. I want to see this box pushed even further. When I tried to go beyond 1,024 containers, the additional containers were created successfully, but they wouldn't power on. After some digging, I discovered this could possibly be a limitation of the default Linux bridge as this maxes out at 1024 ports. So I started throwing the kitchen sink at this problem. I tried various solutions, including Proxmox SDN, Open vSwitch. I was hoping to bypass the limitation, but unfortunately the issue persisted. And it seems the problem is related to limitations in the Linux kernel itself, if what I'm seeing is related to the issue with the default Linux bridge, but I wasn't ready to give up just yet. So what I decided to do was a little bit unorthodox, but I used nested Proxmox instances. Essentially, I ran Proxmox inside of Proxmox. So nested virtualization, great way to run neat little experiments like this. And this allowed me to distribute the containers across multiple virtualized Proxmox instances. So I would max out one instance, move on to the next, move on to the next, spinning up LXC containers. Now with this setup, I managed to spin up a total of almost 2000 LXE containers across four nested Proxmox installations on my mini PC. Okay guys, so I'm kind of going about this in a little bit of a kludgy way. So since I've ran into this limitation that's evidently in the Linux kernel, somewhere at least in the networking stack, one thing I'm going to do is go for broke. I don't give up easily. So what I've decided to do is nest Proxmox instances inside of the mini PC host. So essentially what I want to do is I'm going to max out each of these Proxmox instances and see just how many LXC containers that we can effectively run inside of this nested instance. So guys, I wanted to show you, I'm on my way to populating the fourth Proxmox nested instance running on my physical Proxmox mini PC. So as you can see, I'm still massively spinning up LXC containers. And you can see on this nested Proxmox number four, which let me show you again, it's running off of my physical uh, Geekum A7 Ryzen processor base mini PC. And so I've got four Proxmox virtual instances configured. So I've got all the rest are populated with LXC containers around 550 on each host. And I can scroll down and show you guys. We've got number three, show you guys we got 550 and we're working on 550 on number four. So I'm going to wait and let these spin up and we're going to see if we can actually make it on this hardware. And I will go back and I can show you guys just a little bit of an overview. We're pushing 88% memory with this configuration running four virtualized instances of Proxmox. We've got roughly 80, 82% peaks of the 16 threads that are available with this Ryzen processor. Really cool stuff. It's nice to see us be able to push the limits of the hardware, but it's also equally very cool to see that this mini PC is able to chew through those workloads and handle such massive numbers of workloads that we're throwing at it. The mini PC handled the workload impressively, and I was able to push the boundaries of what these little mini PCs can do. Okay, guys, I want to show you the grand total of what I was able to fit on this mini PC with 96 gigs of memory. I wound up spinning up four virtualized instances of Proxmox VE. So I have four virtual machines that are Proxmox instances. I assigned 32 gigs of memory to each box. And I know I'm over provisioning the memory there, but seeing in my last experiment how well Proxmox handled overcommit on memory, I wasn't afraid to do that. 
Let me show you inside of each of the Proxmox instances. So I've got Proxmox 01 that you saw in the physical Proxmox console. You can see I've got 550 there. We've got Proxmox 02. We've got 550 there. We've got Proxmox 03, 550. And finally, Proxmox 04, all the way down to 550. So 2200 LXE containers running on this mini PC hardware, which is fantastic. It really shows what we can do with with modern mini PC hardware. It's incredible. Thinking about doing this five, 10 years ago would have just been absolutely crazy. So if I go back to the physical instance, I want to show you just one last look as an overview of the resource consumption on the physical mini PC. I know you can't hear it in the background, but the Geekum is ramped up. So I, I hear the fans basically at full speed. It is ramped up with usage on the CPU and memory. So it is definitely chewing through some processing at the moment. If I look at the overview, we've got a grand total of around 95% memory use. So 89 gigs of that 96 gigs of memory. Also, uh, many mentioned this in the, the video with the virtual machines. It's cheating just a little bit to have the swap usage, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's allowing things to continue to operate. And really, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to just have a real world test of not changing default behavior or trying to tweak that to such a degree that it would not represent what someone would be able to see out of the box with Proxmox running these types of workloads. So swap is definitely full. And again, 95% of the system memory is used. Really awesome, I think. Four virtualized instances of Proxmox. We've got 2200 LXC containers running on this mini PC. So if you combine that with what we found out in the last video, 250 virtual machines, if you were to cut that down, you could run, let's say, 100 virtual machines and 1,000 containers, 700 containers, and 150 virtual machines. It's just amazing to think, really, what types of workloads you can run if you're talking about a home lab or self-hosting. Think about this. Put three of these together into a Proxmox cluster. What would be possible? Kind of crazy experiments I'm doing in the home lab, but that's what it's all about. Doing things that probably never do in production, but just seeing what we can see, satisfying that curiosity and keeping on tinkering. This experiment to me underscores exactly what a home lab is able to do. It allows us to experiment, allows us to play around with things. Uh, we meet challenges and we try to figure out workarounds. And it showcases the potential of mini PCs as well as LXE containers for home labs and beyond. If you've encountered similar limitations with the default Linux bridge, or if you have seen this behavior with LXE containers and at massive scale, and I'd love to know if you found a resolution to this issue. Well, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more awesome content. Well, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more awesome content on virtualization how to. Please do keep on home labbing and I will see you on the next video.